Hey, what's up everybody, Rich Gaming Guy here. Today in this video, we're going to unbox and test out this console right here. This is the Retro Monster Emulelec based retro video game console. This is advertised as being 256 gigabytes with over 48,000 retro video games on it. So I'm super excited to test this out. It sells for just under 90 bucks on AliExpress. So we're gonna check this out. Let's dive into it. All right, so this is how the console actually comes. I just unzipped this, comes in this nice carrying case here. We open it up, nicely padded within. So I'm gonna just kind of unpack everything here. It looks like it comes with two controllers, seem to be PlayStation style controllers, both wireless as far as I can tell. Inside here we have the Hyperbase Retro Monster user manual. Let's take a look in here. Seems to give us some information on how to boot this up. Let's see. Looks to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to review this if I need to when we get this started. We also have our manual for the gamepad controllers. And I did hear something shaking around in here. I believe that's likely going to be the USB receiver in here since they are wireless. And there it is right there. So it does run on what looks like AAA batteries. Yep, AAA batteries. So I will go ahead and connect at least one of those. I'm gonna put this aside so we can easily access that. But up here in this pocket is where we are gonna actually find our retro game console. So that's what I'm most interested in about. Comes in, again, really nicely wrapped up and well protected. We also get a remote so we can go through the menus and do what we need to do there in terms of setting everything up with the, within the settings. Also have a, looks like an HDMI cable here. Yep, HDMI cable. So it seems to have everything we would need, which is great. I'm going to just take this out. And it looks like we have a protector over the top here. So I'm go ahead and peel that back. Also one in the front here. I'm gonna just take that off. So this is really quite petite, very low profile. You can see super thin. Looks like we have good ventilation across the top. Now I don't know much about these, but I'm definitely stoked to actually try this out. So what we're going to do is we are going to obviously review the manual here. I'm gonna do that kind of off camera, just so I know exactly how to set this up, but pretty sure that we're going to need to obviously connect the HDMI cable. So I'm going to go ahead and just unravel that right here. It's only gonna have one spot where that plugs in. Pull that aside. Going to plug in the receiver for the controller right there. And now this does come with a micro SD card and this is running Emuelic on it. So we can just eject that right here. You can see 256 gigabyte micro SD card goes right in the slot. Really nice push eject and then just push it in again to lock it in. So you can hear it click, locks right in place. And here is our power supply cable. This looks to be, let me see, five volts. Okay, good to know. And that's gonna plug in right over here on the back side as well. I'll just take the tie off so I can stretch this over to my power outlet with ease. I'm not gonna plug that in just yet. I'm gonna go grab batteries and we are going to set it up with this controller right here. In terms of the controller, looks to be in decent shape everything seems to be functioning properly i'm not seeing any issues with button binding or anything like that so i'm going to go grab my AAA batteries and we're going to get started all right so here we are booted up into the retro monster here's our all games list that's going to give us the total count of games for this particular setup 48,214 titles included on here which is just insane so we can jump through and check out all the different collections that are added on here so we have the all games list, of course, that's going to be everything in alphabetical order. Here we have our favorite games. We can add games to this custom comes default to zero, but you can add in games that you want. So if there's a specific title you're looking for, you know, you're going to be jumping into a whole lot. You add it to your favorites, it makes it easy to access later on. So we're just going to kind of scroll through all these. I'm not going to name them all out. But you can see there is a count that populates in on the right hand side. So 25 games in here. Here we have arcade games, and this is actually split up into two sections. So this is just 11. Over here we have MAME, though. 
I actually went by it. Inside here, 2,116 titles total. So I'll actually jump into this collection for you guys. We'll check out what this has to offer. So inside each collection is going to look very much like this. You're going to have some box art or cover art for each of your titles. Gives you a brief description, no videos or anything like that because that takes up too much space. We wouldn't be able to get all this onto a 256 gigabyte micro SD card. But everything is laid out really nicely. Super organized. You can still see, you know, obviously what each title is. And you get some box art to go along with it. So I'm going to back out of this collection. We're going to continue on. Atari 2600. Pretty much all of the Ataris here. Chock full of games. We have some Wonder Swan titles here. Capcom 1, 2, and 3. I believe those are complete as well. Colico Vision, Commodore 64, Amiga. Just tons of great stuff. Odyssey 2, that's a big one. You don't see a whole lot. In television, MSX 1 and 2, Vectrex. We have MSU 1 here. We have PC Engine over here. Lots of great stuff. Super Graphics, Turbo Graphics titles. Game & Watch over here. Famicom, so Family Computer. Nintendo Entertainment System. This collection has 1,878 games, so that's massive. Um, another really cool thing in here that we don't see a lot of are hacks. So we have NES hacks in here, 340 hacks. So I'm going to actually jump into this. And you can see these are all really unique titles. They all come with box art as well. So really cool to see on here. We're going to back out and continue on. Famicom, again, family computer disk system right here. So we have 209 games. Game Boy, we have... 1,175 games. We also have hacks for Game Boy. We're going to have the same thing for Game Boy Color, Super Nintendo, all that good stuff. So Super Famicom here with 1,953 games. Super Nintendo here with 755 games. We have Super Nintendo hacks here, 64 of those. Virtual Boy, N64 here with 461 games. Game Boy Color, Game Boy Hacks, Game Boy Advance, this is a massive collection as well, 1,811 games inside the Game Boy Advance collection. Game Boy Adva Advance Hacks here, just two of those. Pokemon Mini, Nintendo DS, lots of great stuff here, love Open Bore. Uh, and the cool thing about this too is you can add more games if you wanted to, but you really don't need to because of how many are actually included on here. So all of these Sega collections here, SG-1000, Master System, Mega Drive, Genesis, Genesis Hacks, Game Gear, Game Gear Hacks, Mega Drive, Sega 32X, Mega CD, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, Naomi, Sharp 68000. We have just an amazing assortment of games and collections here, Neo Geo ones, Neo Geo Pocket. PlayStation, PSP, PSP Minis, Supervision, and then we are back to where we started here with our All Games Master list. So now it's time to jump in here. Let's test out the performance and see exactly what we get out of the Retro Monster console. All right, so no issues within there. We didn't see any lags, delays, anything like that. So we're gonna jump into Sega Genesis now. I want to uh, probably check out Sonic actually. So cool thing about this is you can hit your select button. You can move over to the jump to menu here and you can actually jump to specific letters. So for Sonic, I wanna to go to the S's. So I'll just go over here to S, select that. Brings me to all the titles in here that start with S. So I don't have to go all the way from the A titles down which depending on the collection could take you a really long period of time. So we're jumping in here. Let me go into, I want to go to one of the older Sonics. Let's go with Sonic the Hedgehog. Let's do the original one. And then again, this is the Genesis version. so no issues within Genesis. Now let's kick it up a few notches. Let's check out the performance in 
let's go over to PlayStation, which is one of the more advanced collections. We, che we checked out some of the lower end ones, uh, like NES and Sonic on Genesis. No issues there, but let's check out PlayStation, which is obviously a much later collection. It does take a little bit more to emulate, so let's go in here and find a title that would be good to test everything out with. <laughs> So PlayStation was perfect as well. That's a good sign. So now we're going to kick it up a little bit more. We're going to go over to Dreamcast, which is definitely one of the more challenging collections to emulate. So I'm definitely um, interested to see what the performance is like over there. So here we are at Dreamcast. Let's see what we have inside here for games. We've got Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and 2. Great titles there. Um, Soul Calibur is actually one of the harder games to emulate. So I want to check this one out see what the performance is like here, see if there's any lags, delays, anything like that. Namco! Welcome back to the stage of history. Versus Sufitia. Battle one, fight. Out of the ring. This victory strengthened the soul of Maxi. You win. Battle two, fight. All right, so now the ultimate test. We got to check out N64, which is another definitely challenging collection to emulate. Probably the most challenging in most cases. So we're going to jump over to N64. And we'll probably jump into Mario Kart. I think that is a game that most people are quite familiar with and what the performance should be like on there. Alright, so as anticipated, this was definitely a little bit too much for the system to handle. Very laggy, very delayed. So I'm going to jump into one other title here. Here's the tip. This is the matchup everyone's been waiting for. Alright, so that one was NBA Showtime for N64, and that one was much better. I would definitely say that there's some slight issues there. Uh, not 100% smooth, but definitely better than Mario Kart. So N64 is going to be a little bit hit or miss, it seems. 
Um, now, what else should we check out? We checked out all the lower end systems, no issues there. I suppose we could get into PSP on here and see what that's gonna be like, although I highly doubt it's going to be a great experience considering that we're seeing some disconnects with N64. So there's only 15 titles in here for PSP. Let's see what we've got. So pretty decent titles. Um, let's check out Metal Slug Anthology here, which shouldn't be too demanding but we'll find out. Mission one, start. All right, so no issues with Metal Slug Anthology, although that is an older game that's just been ported out to PSP. So I'm gonna check out a game that is entirely supposed to be PSP anyways. So we're gonna check out Crazy Taxi Fair Wars, even though I believe this also has the original Crazy Taxi games on it, if I'm not mistaken, but we're gonna check those out. Are you ready? Here we go! Right, so that one is an absolute mess just really laggy huge delay on the steering you can see i'm not able to navigate at all in there it's just way too laggy and uh, way too many delays there to be playable all right so we just tested out the hyper bass retro monster console here and i have to say the performance on this is amazing for the amount of money that you're spending now there are limitations n64 isn't perfect uh, psp is not perfect those are collections that are probably just a little too much for this particular console to handle um, there are some settings adjustments you can likely make to better the performance but it's still not going to be 100 percent perfect now everything else prior to those collections is 100 percent perfect so all of your early nintendo early sega or actually all the sega in fact except for sega saturn which i just couldn't test out because i couldn't get into the games using the start button could be a mapping issue there but i didn't spend much time at all trying to figure that out just moved on to the next collection those games did load up perfectly fine so if you can figure out you know the startup um you know issue there whether it's mapping or whatever the case may be with that emulator, then you are likely going to probably have a pretty good performance there because usually we'll see little hiccups in the load-ins um, on games. Didn't see that there. We saw some little hiccups with N64. So, you know, we know that there is some limitations in terms of that. That's not, you know, anything that is hard to imagine though. N64 is notoriously hard to emulate. You likely need, you know, a pretty beefy uh, PC. And this is really um, low profile, really compact, which is a good thing. So you just wanna get this for the right collections. You don't want to have your expectations set too high on here, though Dreamcast did work perfectly. I was surprised by that because Dreamcast also can be a relatively difficult collection to actually emulate effectively. But this took it on and we jumped through Soul Calibur without any sort of issues whatsoever there. Um, we are able to actually access Wi-Fi, uh, web browsers on here, a couple different apps. I didn't dive into all that. I was keeping it purely retro game emulation here in this video, but lots of capabilities here. We have the remote that's included with this that you can also use to you know, navigate within here, um, go through your settings, all that good stuff. I use the controller though, since I was gaming on here. Controllers work really nicely. If you wanted to upgrade, you certainly could. It's Got two USB connections on here, and you can actually put a splitter on here to give yourself more USB connections if you want. Um, the games on here, there's a lot of games that go up to four player. There's certainly that capability. You just have the limitations of the two USBs here. So you would need a splitter if you are going with USB wired or wireless um, controllers with the dongle like I did here today. Uh, everything about this design though is super compact, really low profile. I don't have a tape measure on hand, but it's about five and a half, 
five, five and a half inches wide by about two and a half inches um, deep. So really small. You could even put, you know, a little one of those um, double sided Velcros, stick it to the backside of your TV if you wanted to, just to, you know, keep it off of like a uh, dresser or, um, you know, nightstand or whatever you're using, you know, below your TV to house your consoles or, you know, whatever you have going on there. So really love all the capabilities here. Love the fact that the micro SD card is included here, uh, which at that price point and having everything on there using MULIC, um, totally plug and play. You don't have to go through any of the mapping or anything like that, unless you were to upgrade your controllers. Everything about that is absolutely amazing. To compare this to something else out there, it would be comparable in performance to that of a Raspberry Pi 4 running RetroPie, but at a fraction of the cost. A Raspberry Pi 4 with four gigabyte RAM is going to set you back over $150 just for the computer board. You'd have to go and get yourself a cooling fan case, controllers, cables, micro SD card, micro SD card alone to get one this size and have it be you know, reliable you're gonna spend probably about 50 bucks or so there alone. So you're talking about a 200 on the low end to $250 uh, setup, whereas this is well under $100 uh, at the time of this video, under 90 bucks. So, and it's got all the games on there already set up, simply plug and play. I had this set up in literally seconds. I just had to put batteries into the controller, power everything on, connect it to the TV, and I was off and running able to jump into all these games effortlessly so uh, for the price point you couldn't be in better hands here just know that there are some limitations with what you can do on here of course but that's to be considered when you're paying that lower price so i think it's amazing really happy with this love how compact it is because you, this is something you could just take to a buddy's house take to a family get together play you know some Super Mario Brothers on NES on here. You have so many games that just literally could fit right in your pocket and be taken on the go. And the fact that, you know, you're able to use just a regular HDMI cable, I actually just used one for my PC here. It's already connected to my TV, uh, going through my capture card and all that stuff. So I just unplugged that, plugged it right into this, and I was set up in literally seconds. So highly recommend this product. Definitely check it out. You can drop down to the description of this video. I'll put a link in there so you can get some additional information on it. If you're interested in purchasing it, click the link, purchase it right there. Uh, if you have any questions, anything like that, feel free to hit me up in the comment section of this video. Always happy to help you guys out any way I possibly can. That's gonna do it for today though. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up on the video. Huge help to me here on YouTube. And of course, hit the subscribe button to stay in the loop for all future videos here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.